sign says British Steel, but the Chinese owner, Jingye, is firmly in charge of the giant Scunthorpe site. In a statement this morning, the company's chief executive, Shi Feng Han, confirmed plans to close the coking ovens here with the loss of 260 jobs. With talks ongoing with the Treasury over a support package worth hundreds of millions of pounds, the decision to go ahead and cut jobs was condemned by the local MP and met with concern from workers well used to uncertainty. According to unions, I've just been reading a union statement, uh, there's still a bit of hope, so we are, we are open. Obviously for younger, younger, younger end as well, probably, as for um, older end, so I'm coming to what end of my working life anyway. We know it will come in. So, it can't be helped, so... It'll devastate this town if we do lose it, you know what I mean? But I don't think we will, not, not for a while. Can it keep going without the coke oven? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, if they do electric art furnaces and uh, in, get gas in, we will be, you know what I mean? We'll be OK. But it's up to the Chinese, isn't it, really? I'm absolutely devastated. They're obviously, this is a lot of people's lives, you know? And obviously, I've got kids. Obviously, I work at the coke ovens as well, so obviously it's not, it's not brilliant news, is it? British Steel declined to give interviews today, but the firm blamed exceptional energy costs and carbon pricing, bills which jumped by over £190 million last year. It said it had invested hundreds of millions of pounds in the works and claims the closure of the ovens will support its journey to net zero. Unions say it's a case of broken promises. We don't see how there can be any more cuts. As I say, we're already at low, low levels, uh, dangerous levels of, of manning. To go any lower, we, we think we, we'd be putting lives at risk. And at a time of trade tensions and diplomatic sensitivities, unions say the government cannot afford to risk two of only four remaining British blast furnaces closing entirely. The government has to step forward and make a decisive decision on whether they want a steel industry in this country or they don't want a steel industry because then we have to import all the coke that we need to run our processes. So that basically that holds us to ransom to other countries uh, and any of one of them should be getting a conflict, any one of them can shut that supply off. Over 1,400 people work here, supporting thousands of others in the supply chain and there are now fears more jobs could be at risk in the months to come. The local Conservative Council and MP say affected staff are being offered help. Residents here are determined a town forged on steel must have it at its heart in the future. We're joining me now is Henry Murison, who's chief executive of the Northern Powerhouse Partnership. Um, Henry Murison, just give us your assessment of the impact of what's happened today, what might happen in the weeks to come on the, the Scunthorpe itself, but also the region as a whole. My concern is, firstly, with the workers affected, and obviously whatever can be done to keep those jobs in whatever form um, is important. I think in terms of the wider economic impact, you have to remember the many thousands of jobs that depend on the onward process, so the supply chain, but also those industries that rely on it, for example, at the local port in Immingham. So I am concerned about the, the wider trajectory of the, the wider steelworks, and we do have to make that transition to start, as was said in the film, to work towards electric art furnaces, because actually, in the end, blast furnaces are old technology, but as a country we're not transitioning fast enough to those more sustainable ways of producing the steel we need. Well, I'll come back to that transition in a minute, but the business secretary said that it wasn't a given that the UK needed a steel industry. Does she have a point that actually you need to invest in a whole greener economy away from steel? I think the problem is that we would be unique amongst industrialised nations to not have our own steel industry, and it is a sovereign capability, whether it be for our defence work or for important parts of the transition to net zero, in sort of growing uh, industries like in nuclear, we do need access to steel in the UK. What do you mean UK. by sovereign capability then, Well, really? we need to be able to control the steel we make, not just for uh, commercial uses, but also for many of our military projects. So we're building nuclear submarines across in Barrow. I think we'd have a lot of concern about not being able to produce our own steel for projects like that in particular. Right. Well, you talked about these electric arc furnaces and the kind of new technology. Um, the government's looking at a support package for that. £300 million has been discussed. But shouldn't the Chinese employer foot the bill, given that they've already had, what, nearly a billion of public support? I think it is on existing businesses that own steelworks in the UK to take responsibility to invest in their own future. 
But it isn't unusual for governments to support businesses across Europe in the steel industry to make this transition, to create the right conditions and the right environment. And it is about the onward jobs and the growth that comes from that. So my point is that it's not just about the steelworks itself. It's about its place in an ecosystem. And so we need a steel industry because otherwise we'll be importing steel, maybe more dependent than we are now. And steel that we import from Europe, even made by traditional processes like uh, through, through the kind of traditional uh, types of work that we've got at Scunthorpe, it's twice as bad in carbon terms to bring steel from Europe, much worse if you bring it from India or China. So it would be completely sort of the wrong, the wrong direction, particularly if when we're doing projects that are about getting us to net zero, to rely on steel that hadn't been made in the UK. It's the right thing to create jobs here as part of these transitions that we're making to net zero, and jobs in the steel industry are a critical part of that. So where does all this leave levelling up? I think it leaves the government with some real questions to answer. We should have made that transition already towards greener steel um, and to be able to create jobs in those supply chains already. And I think it's, it's dependent on the new Secretary of State, on Grant Shapps, to really grab the bull by the horns. Clearly, this is about the owners of this particular plant probably sending the government a message, sending the Treasury a message, that they are going to demand support from government if they're going to be prepared to make this a going concern. I'm afraid it's sad it's come to that because actually government needs to send a clear message, whether it be to new entrants or to existing companies here in the UK, that we are going to make this a place where you can make steel. And I think the business secretary and others need to get on board with that messaging. Otherwise, we're not going to be sending the clear message we need to, to global markets and to those businesses already here, that we are open for business when it comes to keeping steel production here in the UK. Henry Mearson, thank you very much for joining us.